Every year on Christmas night I give my nuts a check I handle them so carefully This year I got quite a fright When I was mid-inspect Hey guys, Chef Jason to you coming from the kitchen and uh, making a recipe today for some cocktail nuts. I make them, but I've never really written a recipe for them and just recently did a dinner with some friends, Diane and Eric, and their friends loved them and I'm a little late getting this recipe out, but hopefully the video is one easier than the recipe um, because it gives you some opportunities to sort of customize it yourself, um, but to, it's an easy follow along. So, but if you're making cocktail nuts, you should have a great cocktail in hand. And from the Karakashevic family, Marco Jenny, is um, the Charbet line of products, the R5 hop flavored whiskey, the double and twisted pomegranate liqueur, their amazing line of vodkas um, from their Meyer lemon to uh, their grapefruit raspberries, all made from fresh fruit flavors. They make themselves Cabernet Sauvignon. I don't want this to be a commercial i just want you to know about an amazing product out there that you may not know about so go to charbet.com take a look like the r5 hop flavored whiskey is actually made from racer 5 ipa in a lambic pot that actually their logo on the bottle is a uh, french lambic pot that they actually brought over i forgot how many years ago and marco you probably kicked my butt for not knowing that and also really cool uh the mendocino fire was literally at their back door marco the karakashic family has donated ten thousand dollars to victim relief and stuff like that and as you can see i have a big neat glass here to sip on while we do this but back to the recipe at hand so it's some toasted nuts and the two main ingredients in it's toasted nuts and rosemary and some seasoning. There you can play a little bit yourself. Oh, one other thing. See this little bottle right here? I can't really say what it is, but I was there the day. This is the first batch of this ever made, and someday it'll be public released what it is, but I am so honored to have this uh, from Marco. So anyways, back to the nuts again. So two main ingredients, actually three, would be oil, olive oil. You want to do a nice robust flavor, something, you know, it's got a really good uh, flavored oil. You don't want to use anything else. Um, but later, if you want to add some chili oil to make it spicy, or whatever, great. That's up to you. Again, I'm going to give you a lot of things that you can do to adjust it, but I want you to get the base down first. So when you're doing the nuts, you want to make sure they're raw nuts. Uh, you don't want anything cooked, roasted, salted, or anything done to it because it'll throw off the flavor and you won't get a good finished product. Um, so here I'm using cashews and almonds. Uh, in these and um, I have a saute pan here with the olive oil in it. You can see I only have it about 180 degrees. This is on an induction burner. So all we're going to do first is take and we're going to place our nuts into the oil and you shouldn't hear a lot of noise at first because we're really wanting to cook these slow and get flavor out of them because if you cook them too fast What's going to happen is they're either going to taste burned or they're not going to get that nice rich flavor that you want. So at some point in time during this video, I am going to go to like high speed. So you'll see them toast. What will take me 10 minutes will look like only a couple to you. So we're going to start here and uh, get these toasted. I'm going to lift the heat up to about 220 or so um, and get these toasting. And since you are basically frying these, don't try to rub them with oil and put them in the oven and cheapen this up because, again, the process is to get them nicely toast coated in the oil, which I'm doing right now. And also, you'll see I'm using a nonstick pan, which is great. I mean, the heat shouldn't get too hot to where you're going to worry about burning them. But also, if you're going to use a nonstick pan, um, you can uh, make sure that you use a high temperature. A rubber spatula which they make they'll make these they go up to like 450 degrees so you don't worry about melting it um and then too we were talking about oil earlier olive oil is great you can use an infused olive oil um you know with rosemary since rosemary is going to be in there but again the key thing to this recipe is the nuts and the rosemary so you don't want to use something that's going to clash with the rosemary um because then obviously no bueno it doesn't got to taste so good and you don't want to put anything with liquid in it um 
sugar you saw it can but you'd have to do it at the end and lift it to me this is just a great salty or herbaceous nut that goes great with charvet r5 charvet double twisted or charvet meyer lemon on ice so anyways we're going to go ahead and you'll get these going and as soon as we see them starting to start browning a little bit i'm going to switch this over to um high speed so i'll have to stand here and hold this camera and watch it where it only seemed like moments to you um, but we're going to do that but while we talk about that i'm going to show you so this was um i'm going to say um for nuts it was two pounds total um pound of each um it didn't look like because i had it split open and then we have a half a cup of fresh chopped rosemary that's key do not use dry rosemary it'll taste like dirty grass or something it's just not good there's a lot of oil in it and rosemary should when you chop it should have a little bit of stickiness to it like say it's stuck to my finger there it should have a little bit of stickiness to it and a really piney flavor uh, or essence uh, to it because again this is really the essence of making these correctly is the the slow toasting the olive oil and the fresh rosemary you could get away with salt and pepper um, the night Diane Eric we did it with you guys we added a lemon pepper and a, and a garlic pepper um, a little crushed red pepper I'm also going to add some fennel seed to these um, here shortly um, but one of the things that you can do is really again any dry seasoning you want we have tagine which is a, a Spanish seasoning which has lime it's a little bit of acidic and chili to it which again goes great with the rosemary and stuff um, and I'm also going to put a little bit of black truffle salt in here um, again truffles a little bit more indulgent during the holiday season that you can then also in glass of nice <laughs> enjoy a nice glass of Sharp AR5 bourbon, neat or on the rocks. And then um, there's the fennel seeds I'm going to use. I'm going to use a little bit of Maldon salt uh, in there as well. And also some rosemary salt. Um, but great, but there's all kinds of stuff. There's applewood smoke. You can use a seasoning called chaat masala, which is Indian. Um, had some tartness to it. Really good. Um, if you want to add some other unique flavor, this is called... Um, Furakaki, which is available at Asian stores. One has a wasabi flavor. One is regular. Um, it's sort of nori and bonito and things like that um, that will add flavor to these. And also some color as well. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get this heat up again a little bit more so we can get these going. Because as soon as I start getting to where I hear them frying a little bit, we're going to go ahead and turn this so I don't have to keep filling up all this b-roll with a lot of talking because we're already at eight minutes okay I think you can start to hear them now and I'm gonna switch it over to the hyperlapse so you don't have to hear me keep babbling F right when I was made inspect oh it upset me terribly to my dismay, it seems something ain't right It looks like someone's come and had a bite I don't know what to do I wish my nuts were left unchewed I'm angry and confused Who would do this? I don't think I would mind so much If they had asked me first But I gave no such consent they could have had a little touch, but this is so much worse I've never been in such torment Why couldn't they Okay, so I've come off hyperlapse now and these have been actually so tame, believe it or not, for about seven or eight minutes But you can see right in here, see how they're starting to get a nice brownish color And again, you want to develop this slowly There's, uh, you know, there's no saying shortcuts or bleep cuts Um if you say shh and then put an it on the end, that's what it is. Shortcuts are shh, it, 
cuts. But anyways, um, this is about the time we want to add the rosemary because two things we want to do is one is to get the moisture out of the um, the nuts themselves. You probably hear it a little bit when I stir it in because the rosemary, you hear that sizzle that wasn't there before? Because the rosemary does have moisture in it, but we also want those oils um, to uh, get um, bloomed out and so they coat the uh, uh, nuts with them. So I want to talk about that. Um, we'll go back into hyperlapse again to uh, finish cooking this off. And I'm also going to be doing a beta test on a scratch and, uh, <clears throat> scratch and sniff screen. So at the end, um, we'll put a focal point on the screen where you'll be able to actually scratch it and smell it. Um, so look for some feedback on that to see if you're able to see how great these smell during this process. So um, just wanted to cover that, but you can see they've got a nice toasted color now. They're getting there, especially like right there. You see that? But again, we want to do this slow. You don't want to do it fast and burn them or um, get just a bitter flavor on the nuts. You're trying to develop um, a really nice flavor. Um, so we're going to go ahead back in the hyperlapse again and get them going. And then we are seizing them and they'll be ready to eat. So let's switch it over again. Now they've been munched, all I can do is moan. Okay, so we came back off a hyperlapse because now the rosemary has dried out a little bit. So now we're going to add some of our seasoning. So we talked about wanting to add some fennel to it. So, um, Eric, Diane, you guys didn't have this, but with the holidays, that anise flavor and smell uh, that comes off the fennel is really great. It's great with the rosemary, but if you're not a big fan of the flavor of fennel, then that's your decision not to put it in. But you can see these nuts are getting nice and toasted uh, in here. You can see the rosemary is getting nice and crisp. Um, and if you listen to it, you can hear it. But look how beautiful those are. And again, um, testing something new with a beta test on the scratch and sniff screen. So I really hope later uh, when we put that on there, um, there'll be a spot on the screen that you're touch it and supposedly something happens where it's picking it up and you'll be able to smell it so we'll see if it works who would do this i don't think i would mind so much if they had asked me for okay so we have now got everything you can see look how nice and toasted the nuts are you can see the rosemary and stuff is all uh, toasted brown we got some that are going to add a little bit more toasted flavor but again these are perfect you don't want to overdo it and we've been cooking these for about 15 minutes so again you, you can see this is a bit of patience but you can see the rosemary is still green you don't want to get it like really brown but you do want it dried out you want to get it so the oils are this is crispy you can't maybe see it in my hand but that's crispy the only thing that's left in the oils is the moisture is gone we don't want to add anything moist to these because they'll get soggy um, and when you go to store them later they're super easy. You just put them on a sheet pan, pop them back in the oven, warm them back up again, and they're right like they are right now. So, um, again, you know, great. Uh, what you can do, too, is when you're serving them, get like a, a ceramic trivet or something like that, put it in the oven, put it warm, and then put it underneath the towel like the old days when they had the foot warmers and stuff and um, to keep these warm because, obviously, they're really good when they're warm. So now we're going to do... Uh, the way we did them, a little bit, so I'm putting a tiny amount of truffle. Some people, um, you know, truffle's too strong for them, so we're going to add just a, a wee bit of truffle on there. And then just for a tad of spice, again, this is, everything is subjective with this. So we put a little crushed red pepper in there, and now we're putting um, this garlic and herb spice. Diane, I actually used a spice that you have in the kitchen um, that had both garlic herb and lemon. So... Um, if you want to tell your friends what it is, if you still have it, but if not, I'm using this one again, I got a salt free cause we're adding some better salts to it. So why add additional sodium if we're going to do adding a better salt? Um, then we're adding a lemon pepper. Um, and I wouldn't put lemon zest in it because, um, if you get too far down and get pith in it, um, it'll taste funny and stuff like that. So, um, it's easier just to use that. Here we have a rosemary salt that we're going to put 
um, oh, just a little bit in there since we already have the rosemary. And I think we already got the, showing you the Malden, but the Malden salt is just beautiful. Look at that, how gorgeous is that? This just adds so much great salt flavor to whatever you're making. Um, and then again, it's sort of subjective up to what you want to do. Here we have, um, this is actually ground up Montreal steak seasoning. And believe it or not, one of the main ingredients in Montreal steak seasoning is dill. If you look, there's a lot of dill seed and we've actually shaken it out in screens and you can see they actually spray what's called dill oleo resin, which is a dill oil um, that they put on there. So now we've got all our seasonings on there. We've got these great toasted nuts. Look how beautiful the color is on these. Um, and all you want to do is just check it at the end. Do they have enough seasoning for you? You know, again, a very subjective recipe, but very easy to make. Um, to be on the end, the approximate starting points of it was a half cup of oil, half cup of uh, chopped rosemary, and two pounds of uh, the nuts. And then the seasonings were all teaspoons and stuff. But again, um, this is it. I'm going to shut them off now, and we're going to taste one. Mmm. Amazing flavor. I'm going to add a little bit more like garlic and lemon to them. Um, but again, you know, everything is subjective to what you want to do with them and how they're seasoned. And then I'm going to take and go ahead and just plate them up onto a plate for... Um, uh, folks to have and again like I said um, you can do something to keep them warm so underneath here we have a plate that's been in the oven hot and that's where we're going to go ahead and place our nuts and nose and I put a, a napkin down to just to um, get a little bit of the extra oil so they're not around the fingers but again with the half cup of oil and the amount of stuff you can see there's really no oil in the pan um, tried to be very prudent with that. So let me go ahead and get these switched over. And here you go. These are the final toasted nuts with the family of Charvet products. Make sure you go to Charvet.com. And forget to say hey to Johnny. Hey, Johnny. Um, he knows who he is. He's with the Charvet family. But anyways... Uh, again, run through it quickly. We had a half a cup, three quarters of a cup of olive oil, a pound each of raw nuts, not salted, not anything else of cashews and almonds, and a half cup of rosemary. Um, we slow roasted those in the pan, um, took about a good 15 minutes, added our rosemary so we could wick off the moisture and impart the oil flavor of the rosemary. And then um, we added the um, fennel seed, so that would toast in. Then we did our final seasoning and they're ready to go and enjoy with that beautiful glass of Charbet R5 that old Jason may be doing a little day drinking here on Friday. So anyways, um, from me to you, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas, a prosperous, happy new year to Diane and Eric and their friends. I apologize this is late, but hopefully as the old saying goes, better late than never. I hope you enjoyed the song that I found to accompany this video. Um, sorry it's a little long, but wanted to have some fun with it. And in case anybody's wondering, this isn't a museum. It's my eclectic way of decorating. So, But if anybody notices over there, that's actually a door from the Flatiron Building in New York City. That's how they did the train um, painting um, on the New York Central train. All kinds of stuff. That table is a 300-year-old teak door from India. And all kinds of stuff over there. You can see the happy eat sign. I was going to leave those letters loose. So after dinner, I could switch them around to say eight. But it's going to be too much work. But anyways, back to at hand. Our nuts. And from me to you, let 2020 be better for all of us. Um, make the world a better place. And... May mankind be more kind to each other. Take care. Leave my nuts, leave my nuts alone, leave my nuts alone. Oh, who's been gobbling my nuts? Oh, who's been gobbling my nuts?
Leave us alone, leave us alone now. Oh. Who's been gobbling my nuts? Oh, who's been gobbling my nuts? Leave my nuts alone, leave my nuts alone now. Oh. Who's been gobbling my nuts? Oh, who's been gobbling my nuts?